Love is one of the most powerful emotions that I know. And if I had to think about it now, I would say first love is one of the most powerful emotions that probably should be outlawed. Because two months after graduating from high school, when my friends were thinking about going off to college, I chose to marry my first love. And that didn't end well for me. It didn't end well for me because five years later, I found myself with divorce with three children, three, two, and one. Just because you get married does not mean that you become parents. There's a different spin to that. And I became a mother and a wife, but my husband did not become a husband and a father. <laughs> At the beginning of my career for over a decade, I rose to be a senior manager. And there was always a yearning that I would have a leader, a vice president who looked like me, a woman, African American, because for the most part, it was uh, corporate America that was individuals who didn't look like that. And so when I finally got that vice president, I was excited. As a matter of fact, everybody in my area was excited. Um, that she was coming, but when she got there, it was a storm that we'll never forget. Um, she lacked the emotional stability that was needed to manage and lead multi-level, a multi-level organization. Um, she was not thorough, she couldn't communicate properly, and she was not timely. And so that time in my career was a disaster. And so actually, something that I look forward to all of my career is something that I choose to forget most of the time now because it was such an unpleasant experience. Still a senior manager in corporate America, still yearning to be um, at the next level as a vice president, um, just working within on the structure that I was working within. I had a boss that actually I adored, but I just could not seem to get promoted under this particular boss. Um, some of the things that she cited was, she cited a misspelled word in an email, but she referenced the email that was several years old. Um, that was one reason why I couldn't be promoted. She thought that I maybe could use a class in grammar because I misspelled the word several years back. Another reason she gave was um, visibility. Not enough people knew me throughout the organization. But that wasn't true because in my role, I was the most senior individual in that role and I was all over the organization. And so although I adored this boss, um, I just could not get promoted under her. And so as a certified diversity executive, I kind of chopped it off as that it was some sort of unconscious bias that I was experiencing that maybe she wasn't aware of it. Um, and I wasn't aware of it at the time, but I could not be promoted under her. But ironically, when she retired, I was immediately promoted to the next level. So that's kind of how that story ended. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy. 
legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that. But there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise. And think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise. And, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. And if that's you and you someone just want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch, and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. <laughs>
So she had announced her retirement. So they, for one year, began to move over tasks um, from her because I would succeed her. But one year passed and she was still on deck. And a year and a half passed and she was still on deck. And then year two, nobody was even talking about retirement. So it was now the elephant in the room. At this point, I knew that she was hesitating about retiring. But as an HR professional, I knew we couldn't force anyone to retire. And so I made the difficult decision to leave the job that I loved, a company whose mission I love, because I knew I was ready to go to the next level. And so I resigned. And I was promoted to senior leadership for an external company. But ironically, you never know how things are going to shift out and pan out because I only stayed at that position for eight months. And then I was blessed with the opportunity to get the super top position of CHRO, which is a C-suite executive. And I learned from that experience that you have to trust yourself. You have to be qualified when the opportunity presents itself. And sometimes you have to do something that hurts for now to benefit for later. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I want to invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right. When, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you may be in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you. I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say, apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. So what would I tell my 21-year-old self? Well, that your ability to pivot will sustain you. And what do I mean by that? Simply, I mean that even the most well-oiled plan, you're gonna sometimes come across distractions and you need to know how to think of a plan B and sometimes C, use your community, your resources, get help from others, but keep your eye on your prize, your goal, because your ability to keep moving forward towards your goal, your ability to pivot will sustain 
you. Look, relentless execution will yield results. And what I mean by that is that I was once teenage divorcee, children three, two, and one, and now I am a C-suite executive. There is a lot of experience between those two statuses in my life. I kept moving. I kept moving beyond obstacles. I kept moving beyond no. I found another way. And the, the goal is to keep moving. The word relentless is unyielding. And so I want you to keep moving towards whatever that it is for you. Just remember, relentless execution yields results. Your circle will elevate your success. And what I mean by that is you partnering with like-minded individuals, you partnering with subject matter experts, you partnering with peers who have like-minded goals, professional goals, entrepreneurial goals, just like you. Seeking those individuals who are a step up beyond you, who are where you want to be. Those individuals will help you get there quicker with less hiccups in the process. And sometimes it will save you time and money. So remember, your circle, and that's your circle of acquaintances, entrepreneur friends, family members sometime will elevate your success. So why would an organization hire my company? Well, only three to 4% of women are senior leaders in business. And it's not because of a lack of talent, it's because of a lack of knowledge. Individuals in my company, myself included, are individuals who have walked the walk and now we talk the talk and share information. And what I mean by that is, such as myself, I moved from a frontline employee to a C-suite executive. We have current C-suite senior leaders. We have individuals who share knowledge, resources, and sometimes networks who can share with your organization a blueprint that has been tested to get into the C-suite for your female leaders within your organization. What I enjoy most about participating in the making of an entrepreneur is the ability to kind of recount my walk to where I am today. Um, thinking about those uh, defining moments in my career, being able to work with professionals who bring the best out of me. I hadn't even thought about some of those instances because a lot of times when we go through things, we forget. And so what I enjoy about this experience is being able to put on record that you can overcome some things and still achieve your goals. And what better way to do it than to work with a bunch of subject matter professionals. It's been a blast. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid. Right. And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door. How would your life be different um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people and you're able to make a bigger difference? What would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door. Boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. And listen very closely because this might be you. So listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking. They like you. There's conversation going on. 
but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there, and you can't serve them right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm going to give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, easysaleshub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y, sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now, the reason you want to go over to easysaleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things out. We connect again next time. God bless. Oh.